Let's talk about mechanical advantage. Mechanical advantage is defined as the output force divided by the input force. Now we're not so used to thinking about forces in terms of linkages, but let's consider an example. Here we have a rock crushing mechanism. It's a traditional four bar on the left. So we have a crank, a coupler, a rocker, we have a ground link, and we have a rock here that's sitting right between the rocker and a wall. So it looks as though as we press in with a force here at the crank coupler joint, we'd expect motion of the rocker in this direction where this output force where the rocker touches the rock would be large enough to crush this rock between the rocker and the wall. So since we're dealing with rotational components, we have a rotating crank and a rotating rocker, maybe it would be helpful to get rid of the force out and force in and replace them with torque out and torque in. So really the only thing we need to do is remember that force input is equal to the torque input divided by the Rn, this Rn being the distance from the ground link or the ground joint here to our input force and force out would be our torque out divided by our R out where R out is the distance from the O4 position to our output force. So if we do that our mechanical advantage now includes torques instead of forces and that's better because this is a rotational set of links. However, um, we up to this point haven't really talked about torques in terms of linkages. What we have talked about are angular velocities. Um, so it would be great if we could even modify this mechanical advantage a little bit more such that it includes some function of angular velocity input or our crank angular velocity and our output angular velocity which we call omega-4 in terms of our rocker. Well, perhaps if we look at power, um, this will help. Power is defined as I, uh, the force dotted with the velocity. And here it is written out in component form. And we know instead of force and velocity, we could use torques and angular velocities. And we did that on the previous slide. But we need to convert these torques and angular velocities to inputs and outputs. We can do the same with power because our input power is equal to our output power plus the power associated with our losses. Now in this course, since we are dealing with theoretical linkages where there is no friction acting, our power losses, our, lo our power associated with losses is going to be equal to zero. And so in other words, our input power and our output power are theoretically equal. So in that case, our output, I'm sorry, our input power becomes equal to torque in times angular velocity in, and that's equal to torque out times angular velocity out. Again, our inputs are actually twos because this is the torque two or the crank torque and the angular velocity two or the crank um, angular velocity, and our outputs are associated with the rocker. So this torque out could actually be written as T4 and this angular velocity out could actually be written as omega 4. So going back to our system, our rock crushing system, we can say that our mechanical advantage is now um, our input angular velocity times our input radius divided by our output angular velocity times our output radius. So this is great. Now this well, let's say there's one thing about it that we don't like so much, and that's the fact that um, we have to do um, velocity analysis and able to determine our mechanical advantage because we have to know what is our omega-4 as a function of omega-2. However, we do have an equation for that. Um, equation 6.18b says that omega-4 can be calculated if you know omega-2 and some of the angles in our linkage. And so um, in our numerator we have the crank length L2 here, um, our angular velocity of our input or the angular velocity of our crank times the sine of theta 2 minus theta 3 or our crank angle minus our um, coupler angle. And in our denominator we have L4. L4 is our rocker length from O4 up to this position which would normally be labeled B times the sine of theta 4 minus theta 3. 
Now, if you look at these angles, theta 4 minus theta 3 is an angle that we're pretty familiar with. It's our transmission angle, which is shown here. And our, our numerator, theta 2 minus theta 3, we haven't talked about a lot, but we're going to label this angle difference nu. And so what we have instead of what was on top is as follows. If we go ahead and place first our equation for omega 4 in here for our denominator, we will cancel. If you notice, our omega 2 is here, so we take this entire portion and put it in for omega 4, the omega 2's will go away and this is our resulting equation. But again, theta 4 minus theta 3 can be replaced with a, a mu and theta 2 minus theta 3 can be replaced with nu. And so what we end up with is a simpler equation where we just have our output rocker length times the sine of our transmission angle times Rn divided by our crank length times the sine of nu times R out. And so this is a much simpler form of our equation and notice that it only requires position analysis because if you look here all of these items are position related, right? Theta 4, theta 3, theta 2, theta 3. There's no angular velocities in our equation anymore. So just looking at a linkage in, a, um, in its current configuration is enough for us to determine what our mechanical advantage is. And so for a situation like a, a rock crushing situation, we'd love to have a very high mechanical advantage because we want to put in just a little bit of force here. We want to have a large amount of force come out of the system. And so let's think about um, having either small uh, mechanical advantages or very large mechanical advantage as we would like in most um, systems. So here's our mechanical advantage equation again. Here's our rock crushing um, operation. And what we can see is that if our numerator, our uh, uh, sine of, of mu here, if that angle mu goes to zero, then this entire mechanical advantage goes to zero. And when does that happen? So when our coupler and our rocker become collinear, our transmission angle mu would go to zero. In that case, we get no mechanical advantage. That's not what we want, especially not in a system like this. We want a high mechanical advantage. Well, let's take our attention to our denominator. If our nu, the sine of nu, goes to zero, then this entire mechanical advantage blows up. So if our angle nu goes to zero, our mechanical advantage goes to infinity. That happens when we intertoggle between our crank and our coupler because at that point our angle nu goes to zero. Now even though we get a theoretical infinite mechanical advantage, um, this is an actual real system so we can't get an, an infinite mechanical advantage because link deformation will keep this from happening. And so the linkage would break apart before our mechanical advantage got that high. So look at this situation. Here we have a pair of crimpers and we're going to apply what we've just learned to see how uh, a tool, a hand tool like this actually operates. Here we have some links, some lengths, I'm sorry, associated with this particular linkage. You can see here that our input force happens at a distance 4.26, um, I guess, inches from our uh, joint here and our, our out or the distance here is where the actual crimping takes place. So what we need to do is go ahead and put some, some link lengths on this particular linkage so we can see kind of what the crank looks like and where the rocker and where the coupler and the ground links are. And so here's our ground link from this location to this location. So this will be our O2 position and this will be our O4 position. Then we have our crank at this location. So this will be labeled A in a second. We have our coupler and we have our rocker. And so here's A, here's B, and here is where we'll have our angle nu, and that angle nu also exists right on the opposite side. And so angle nu, angle is not, I, I didn't um, put the angle mu on here, but we remember that the angle between the coupler and the rocker is an angle which we generally call mu. And so here we've taken this linkage, I've drawn it in CAD, just so we can go and actually calculate what are these values. Um, some of the link lengths were given for us in the problem um, on the previous figure for the tool, but nu and mu were not calculated, we can do that here. And so our mechanical advantage, again, is our rocker length 
times the sine of the transmission angle divided by the crank length um, times the sine of nu, which is our angle here, times the ratio R in to R out. R in to R out were given for us in the problem 4.26 divided by 1. L4 and L2 were also provided, and so what we need to determine is our angle mu and our angle nu. Now, theta 3 and theta 4, again, in CAD were calculated um, based on this linkage. And theta 3 was found to be negative 326, where theta 4 is negative 236, giving us a mu very close to 90, 89.5 degrees. Our angle nu is based on a theta 2, which is about 49 for this particular configuration of the linkage, and theta 3, negative 326 again, giving us a value for nu of 15 degrees. And so if we plug in our 89.5 and our 15, we find a mechanical advantage of approximately 33. So that's a pretty large mechanical advantage. So whatever force we put in with our hands on the um, on the, I guess, the hand grips of this crimper, that force is multiplied by approximately 33 times. What about a different tool, perhaps a pair of vice grips? There, we use vice grips a lot to um, put a lot of force into something. So here we have a pair of vice grips. We have our input force being applied by our hands here, and we have our output force being applied on whatever we want to grab onto. And so here we have a ground link, we have a crank, we have a coupler, and then we have our output. And so if we look at this, we can see here that um, we're going to have a um, transmission angle mu, which in this case is not 90, but it's looking a little bit more like 60 degrees. But we're in toggle at this location, so our crank is perfectly in alignment with our um, coupler. And so we can say that our nu is equal to either 0 degrees or uh, 180 degrees. And so what is that going to do to our mechanical advantage? Well, here we see our mechanical advantage where um, well, this O4B, we shouldn't get confused about that because our B location is here where our coupler meets our rocker. And so O4B is just another way of saying L4, just as O2A from O2 to A is just another way of saying L2. Um, but again, sine mu in the numerator, um, about 60 degrees. But in our denominator, we see that with this collinear relationship, our nu angle has gone to zero, which kind of takes over the entire fraction, um, creating a zero in our denominator, therefore creating a basically an infinite, uh, theoretically infinite mechanical advantage. So again, this pair of vice grips um, in this particular configuration where we go through toggle here is able to put a lot of force onto the item that we're grabbing onto um, with not so much force being applied by our hands here. Now in a pair of vice grips, unlike the um, tool that we saw previously, the crimper, we are able to modify the toggle position for different sizes of things that we want to grab. So imagine if we were grabbing onto something that was larger, not small like this, but a bigger item. If we were grabbing onto something larger, then we would turn our thumb screw here, moving this O2 position further in. And the further we move that in, that would open up the handle, allowing us to hold onto something larger, but still be able to go through toggle at that location. So basically, it allows us to put a lot of force to, to drive our denominator to zero for different sizes of things that we want to grab onto. And so we can see that mechanical advantage can be very useful in uh, linkages um, for crushing things or grabbing things very tightly. And another cool thing about it is that mechanical advantage can be calculated um, just by um, the uh, looking at the configuration of the linkage and measuring the angles. So basically, it's a position analysis related item. Um, thank you very much.